The earth trembles, the ocean groans, and millions of people along the western seaboard of the United States are left asking urgent questions. When the sea floor shakes repeatedly within the span of a single day, is this simply a cluster of passing tremors, or is it a warning of something far more catastrophic on the horizon? How fragile is the delicate line between daily life and seismic chaos in one of the most volatile fault systems on Earth? Could these shocks be the beginning of a chain that unleashes the dreaded full rupture of the Cascadia subduction zone? In the early morning hours of Tuesday, September 9th, at precisely four minutes past four in coordinated universal time, a major jolt tore through the seafloor west-southwest of Port Orford, Oregon. Seismographs recorded a magnitude 5.8 event, centered 165 kilometers, or about 102 miles, from the coast, at a depth of 13.8 kilometers, roughly 8.5 miles beneath the surface of the Pacific Ocean. The force of this strike, though deep below the waves, rippled outward, triggering a sequence of aftershocks that continued to rattle the region throughout the day. Only 11 minutes after the initial quake, another tremor shook the same offshore zone. This one registered magnitude 4.4 at a depth of 10 kilometers, equal to about 6 miles. 30 minutes later, the earth shifted again, producing a magnitude 3.3 shock at the same depth and location nearly 173 kilometers, or about 107 miles, west-southwest of Port Orford. Barely half an hour after that, a magnitude 2.7 quake struck further south, 166 kilometers, or 103 miles, west of Gold Beach, once more at a depth of 10 kilometers, 6 miles. The sequence unfolded with a relentlessness that defied chance. By sunrise along the Pacific coast, another quake, this time magnitude 3.1, rippled through the seabed 173 kilometres, or 107 miles, west-southwest of Port Orford at 10 kilometres, 6 miles deep. Then came silence, but only for a few hours. At 11.47 in the morning coordinated universal time, a magnitude 4.3 quake struck at a depth of 10 kilometers, 6 miles, west-southwest of Port Orford. This was followed in the early afternoon by a magnitude 2.7 tremor located 135 kilometers or 84 miles offshore, at a depth of 18.9 kilometers, nearly 12 miles, slightly deeper than the earlier shocks. Then, at 1631, a magnitude 3.6 quake occurred 218 kilometers, about 135 miles from the Oregon coast, with its source at 13.4 kilometers, or 8 miles, depth. By the evening hours, the tempo accelerated once more. At 19 hours and 2 minutes, coordinated universal time, a magnitude 4.9 quake shook 181 kilometers, about 112 miles offshore, followed in less than 30 minutes by another, this time magnitude 5.1, at nearly the same distance from land and 10 kilometers, 6 miles deep. Simultaneously, a separate magnitude 4.4 shock was measured 162 kilometers, or 101 miles, west of Port Orford, again at 10 kilometers, 6 miles depth. And as if this barrage were not enough to unsettle nerves, at 19 hours and 40 minutes, the shaking extended southward into Northern California, where a magnitude 3.9 quake struck only 54 kilometers, or 33 miles, west of Petrolia at a very shallow depth of just 2 kilometers, barely over 1 mile beneath the surface. Across this single calendar day, the Pacific floor off Oregon and Northern California produced no fewer than 13 measurable quakes ranging in magnitude from 2.7 to 5.8. The clustering, the depths, and the geographic spread raise immediate questions for both scientists and coastal residents. Is this pattern the harmless afterplay of tectonic plates grinding in silence? Or is it a prelude to the nightmare scenario long feared along the Cascadia subduction zone, where the Juan de Fuca plate dives beneath the North American plate? The numbers alone paint a sobering picture. A 5.8 main shock offshore may not seem catastrophic compared to the record-breaking monsters of magnitude 7 or 8 that have devastated parts of the world, but its context is everything. It struck in the very area where geologists have for decades warned that stress is accumulating along the locked section of the plate boundary. That stress, when released in a full margin rupture, 
is expected to produce a magnitude 9 quake, one that would dwarf all these tremors combined. Why does the Earth suddenly release a burst of energy in a sequence like this? The depths of around 10 to 14 kilometers, or roughly 6 to 9 miles, suggest shallow crustal interactions, the kind most dangerous to coastal infrastructure. The spread, from 135 kilometers to over 200 kilometers offshore, mirrors the geometry of the subducting slab. When viewed together, the pattern forms a jagged line paralleling the Oregon coastline. That line is not random, it is a scar of immense tectonic forces pressing relentlessly against each other, day after day, century after century. Local emergency officials wasted no time in issuing alerts, though no tsunami warning was declared since the quakes did not appear to trigger significant seafloor displacement. Still, the repeated shocks rattled nerves in coastal communities from Gold Beach to Astoria. Residents accustomed to preparedness drills suddenly found themselves testing evacuation readiness in real time, asking whether the next rumble might send them fleeing to higher ground. For the scientific community, this cluster represents both an opportunity and a puzzle. Seismologists are working around the clock to pass the waveforms, seeking clues in the frequency content, the rupture propagation and the stress distribution. Could these be simple aftershocks of the initial 5.8? Or is this an earthquake swarm, a phenomenon often associated with fluid movement deep in the crust, sometimes linked to volcanic or hydrothermal activity? Could this be a foreshock sequence pointing to an even larger quake still to come? The memory of March of 2011 in Japan is never far from mind. In the days before the catastrophic Tohoku quake of magnitude 9.1, a series of smaller offshore quakes, some in the magnitude 5 range, peppered the region. Many dismissed them as ordinary, only in retrospect did they form the chilling prelude to one of the most devastating disasters in modern history. The Oregon Cluster raises that spectre once again. The Cascadia subduction zone is geologically capable of producing an event on par with Tohoku, with a rupture length stretching from Northern California through Oregon and Washington into British Columbia. Such an event would last minutes rather than seconds, and the tsunami generated would inundate entire coastal towns within 30 minutes of the rupture. So, when multiple offshore quakes strike in less than 24 hours, scientists ask, is this the fault relieving stress in small increments? Or is it the crust rearranging itself in preparation for the big one? And the public asks in more practical terms, should we be leaving, preparing, or praying? The seismic data from September 9th reveals a pattern that scientists cannot ignore. The main shock, a magnitude 5.8 event 165 kilometers or 102 miles west-southwest of Port Orford at a depth of 13.8 kilometers, 8.5 miles, fits the profile of a typical offshore rupture along the Cascadia subduction zone. What stands out is not the size alone, but the chain of aftershocks that followed in rapid succession at shallow depths of 10 to 14 kilometers, 6 to 9 miles. The clustering is unusual. In a normal aftershock sequence, scientists expect a gradual decay in both frequency and magnitude after the main shock. Here, however, the pattern was punctuated by fresh bursts of energy hours later, including a magnitude 4.9 and a magnitude 5.1, each at depths of 10 kilometers, 6 miles, and nearly the same offshore distance. This suggests that multiple patches of the fault are interacting rather than one simple rupture, relieving tension. The geographic spread from 135 kilometers, 84 miles, to more than 218 kilometers, 135 miles offshore, aligns with the geometry of the subducting Juan de Fuca plate beneath North America. This distribution forms a jagged line parallel to the Oregon coastline, signaling that stress is being transferred across several fault segments. The very shallow strike near Petrolia, California, magnitude 3.9 at only 2 kilometers, 1 mile depth, hints at stress redistribution southward into a different but connected system, where the San Andreas Fault meets Cascadia. The scientific concern is not that these quakes are catastrophic in themselves, but that they reveal how restless the zone remains. Small events do not necessarily reduce the risk of a mega quake. In some cases, they can destabilize locked sections of the fault. 
Historical comparisons such as the foreshock sequences before the magnitude 9.1 Tohoku quake in Japan in 2011 remind experts that swarms can precede disaster. Seismologists now focus on waveform analysis, rupture propagation modeling, and stress field calculations. They're asking whether fluids in the crust, hydrothermal activity, or irregular fault geometry may be driving the swarm. The depth consistency around 10 kilometers is striking, as it points to brittle crustal failure rather than deep mantle processes. Each event adds a piece to the puzzle, but the picture remains incomplete. The technical bottom line is sobering. The Cascadia subduction zone is capable of a magnitude 9 rupture at any time. This swarm does not guarantee that outcome soon, but it underscores the inevitability of future seismic release. Preparedness remains the only defence. If you found this breakdown valuable, make sure to like, share and subscribe for more in-depth analysis of breaking seismic events. And don't forget to tap that hype icon so this video reaches a wider audience. Your engagement helps amplify the message of awareness and preparedness.